If you are new to our channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. Microfarming is a term that uh, many people may not know of. They, they know farming and they know they maybe heard, heard microgreens, but microfarming is a combination of kind of all of those things together. Or even like urban farming. Urban maybe, farming maybe. is kind of can be categorized into this microfarming. The, the essential definition is what of a micro farm? So it's agricultural agriculture that's done on a smaller scale in urban, mostly urban areas, sometimes kind of suburban areas too, and it, they operate small lands of five acres or less. Um, some people operate on something as small as like a tenth of an acre, but the difference, the big, the big difference is that. You could say, well, I have a micro farm, I have a backyard garden, but micro farmers are doing this to make money. This is their sole income. They, right. they are co- small areas, compact, intense planting to produce a lot in a, in a short period of time because they're selling it to people that are coming up in their, in the yard, uh, customers, neighbors, restaurants. They've got contracts with restaurants. Farmers markets. Farmers markets. So Us, it's not like, oh, like we didn't have any eggplants this year. You you really in this kind of situation failure is not an option. You have to make this work, otherwise you don't get paid. Type of situation. Right. So um, yeah. So that's exactly it. So uh, the biggest thing is that it's a small land, and it's a high yield. So right. that means that like they want they want to grow a lot so that they can have so they can make money. Because Elliot Coleman, he is a, a a very popular name in this world of micro farming. And what is it he does? Eighty thousand dollars a year in profit on a half acre or acre something plot, like something that. like that. Yeah. So it, it can, you, with the right business plan, you can produce a lot and make a lot of money. But like anything else, this is not an easy endeavor. No, this you is have your... to have a background of of all of this information of soil life, microbial life. What plants do well? You have to have greenhouses. You have to have irrigation because this is not. Just, oh, it's going to rain next Thursday. I'll just wait. You can't afford to wait. Now, uh, again, and this, yeah, this is their job. They, they're not. A lot of times, this is what they do. Now, we, we may be familiar with Will Allen. This is not what uh, he. This is not a category in which he falls in. No, Will Allen had the last, the last farm, official farm in the city of Milwaukee. So he had a farm. So it, it was wasn't a, farm. a micro farm. No, it was just a farm. And, and again, you, it, it, this can be also people do this for the CSA, the Community Supported Agriculture, and, and what that. Uh, term means people will go and buy a subscription so many dollars a year and each week during a certain period of time you know 26 weeks a year 30 weeks a year you get a box i think it, yeah, it's either like every other week it depends on, on what the the farmer set, set up yeah. but you get a box of four or five or six different items that can it's usually by the poundage so you get x amount of pounds of vegetables now does that does, is it, it does, set, there's no guarantee no saying guarantee like, right like you're gonna get uh you're going to get promised tomatoes, eggplants, peppers, and squash. You might just get what the what the farmer has. Right. Now you're not going to get five pounds of like just cucumbers or something, but it's gonna it's it's going to be something that um that you have uh, that it's a variety. Right, and and, and it's the, kind of a it's kind of like a, a grab bag. And also the some of these micro farms they will do mushrooms, microgreens, which microgreens are what. Microgreens are basically just baby greens, is what they are. So it's things like um, smaller, smaller leaves of lettuce. Um, uh, one called, I think it's called Missoula. Mm-hmm. Miz- is that how you say yeah. it? I don't know. Um, that weird one that looks like seaweed, kind it's of. It's got a little spice to it. Yeah. So um, even like fennel can sometimes be a microgreen. But it's a, it's a, in a ten by tw- uh, ten by twenty flat that like you would typically put s- your your plant starts in. Uh, you can have you know several thousand plants. In that one little ten by ten inch by twenty inch tray, and you're cutting it down. People, you get this on your your sub sandwiches and some of these sub shops. Uh, these microgreens are very even, highly yeah, intense. Yeah, even like alfalfa sprouts. Sprouts right. are microgreens too. So highly intense nutrients in a very small package. Right. But and uh, it's and it's beef. Uh, there's pork sometimes in these micro farms based on the city ordinance. Eggs is a very popular one. Meat rabbits. Meat rabbits. Mm-hmm. Uh, so micro farming is something that is goats. Not, like not, in Portland, the micro farms have goats. And then based on the the city or the state ordinance, whether or not they can give raw milk away. Or sell the, mm-hmm. in, in the package because there's a whole another that's a whole another uh, show in itself. Right, and sometimes these micro farmers will they'll have you know their own place where they live, mm-hmm. and then they'll buy like an, an abandoned lot, 
Um, Sometimes it's on the property in which they live. Yeah, that too. But maybe they live in an apartment like downtown mm-hmm. and they buy an abandoned lot and they turn that into their micro farm. So there's um, there's a lot of different options there for micro farms. Uh, it, it's an investment. Uh, if done right, you, you can make a tremendous amount. Well, I wouldn't say a tremendous amount when, all you, you, when you cover your overhead and all the time that you, because you're 24 7. It's essentially what you're doing. It's like living on a farm that you never leave because you've got to basically baby these plants. I mean, not so much that, but bug control, insect control, rodents. Um, you're, uh, you're essentially, you're trying not to fail or have fails happen. Right. So, like, say us backyard gardeners, not that we want fails to happen, but, okay, like, say a, to- a tomato hornworm takes out your entire tomato crop. You're like, well. We went to the farmer's market when that happened to us in 2014. We bought tomatoes. Right. So you have you have that option. When it comes to micro farming, you you are a farmer where it's like this is your livelihood. This is what pays your bills. And the advantage to the micro farming, these people have they they have greenhouses or what they call greenhouses or uh, tall uh, high like, don't yeah, high like, tunnels, and they can grow sometimes year round. You get a lot of your cool weather crops, uh, your your leafy greens and that type of thing. You, they can get a much earlier start on those, and even get earlier starts on your warm weather crops like your tomatoes, your peppers, your eggplants. Uh, so they can get a jump start and actually produce more, make more money because they're growing tomatoes in January you know, outside in a in a essentially a greenhouse, and you're having tomatoes by May uh, when it comes down to it. So micro farming, it is a uh, interesting. Um, out, uh, interesting uh, occupation, and you can go on your internet, do your search for microfarming, and you'll see some of the phenomenal, small, compacted, intensely planted, very organized, and there's no weeds in these places. No, it, it's it, kind of amazing. It, it's crystal clean. It's like what you would see on the cover of a magazine type mm-hmm. of thing. Uh, it's really a science. I it's think. a science because, yeah, yeah uh, if you've got weeds growing, what is the weeds doing? They're taking nutrients away from the plants in which you're intending for them to grow. And crowding the plants. Crowding the plants. Mm-hmm. And weeds are going to out-compete your vegetables in which you plant for three very simple reasons. One, they propagate from root cuttings, from rhizomes, and from seeds. Most of your vegetables do not propagate from, mostly it's just from seeds in which they produce either internally or at the end of the season when they go to flower. Um, a few will propagate from rhizomes, but the majority is just one of the three, and the weeds can outcompete that. Thank you for checking out the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show. For more, go to the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com for full-length in-studio video and podcast replay of Season 1. Season 2 underway and added weekly. Tweet us at TWVG Show or hashtag TWVG to be part of the program.